Hello. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be. Uh, I'm Josh Payne. I am director of business here at Quantopian. And uh, we're here today to talk about new sentiment and how to use it in uh, algorithms on Quantopian. So we're going to be joined later uh, in the in the in the webinar by uh, James Christopher, who is uh, was a Quantopian intern extraordinaire. He's joining us from Seattle, uh, and he'll present uh, he'll present an algorithm that that he wrote and walk you through how to use. Uh, new sentiment uh, data that we have built natively into Quantopian. And we'll also be joined by Kumesh, uh, CEO of ACERN, who uh, is the provider of that data. Um, so we'll have some Q&A with both of them. I will, uh, and before I, before I uh, throw it over to them and ask them some questions, uh, I'm going to do just a quick, quick overview of our partner data here in Quantopian. Just so uh, everybody on the line uh, understands understands what we're talking about and uh, gets a gets a good uh, gets a good feel for 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 the, for the data that we have in the system. Uh, you know, just as an introduction, we we've got a partner program here at Quantopian, and we work not only to uh, deliver market data and fundamental data to our community, but also data from a, a broad sort of community of data providers uh, out, out, in the, out in the market. You know, there's a large community of providers who, who deliver data to hedge funds, investors, and, uh, and institutions, and they provide that data for, for use in quant algorithms. And we want to make that data, that premium data, available to you as a community member as well. So if you go over to uh, the data menu here on the Quantopian website, you'll land on this page, and you'll see that there are both free data sets and premium data sets that we're making available to you. So free data sets, we, uh, we always have made uh, market data free, and that continues to be free for your use. We've got uh, fundamental data that we've been delivering for over a year, uh, and that's free for uh, your use inside the algorithms, inside your algorithms, inside your research, in Quantopian research. And then we also have, uh, but we also have partner data sets, data that you can use for alpha models in your algorithms, or data that you can use for risk models in your algorithms. Um, so we have uh, some of this data is just flat out free uh, data that we load up from Quandl. You can see some uh, interest rates. You can see uh, uh, unemployment, uh, employment numbers, unemployment numbers, uh, consumer price index. Gold price, all sorts of uh, low, tends to be lower frequency uh, public domain data from Quandl that we load up, and you can use natively inside Quantopian for use in the contest. Uh, we also have premium data, and the premium data uh, to have full access to it, you do need to pay a subscription fee. But the great thing about this premium data set, uh, these premium data sets, is that there's a free sample available to you as well. And I want to make sure that everybody understands that. So in the case of, well, rather, we're going to talk about a CERN a lot later. In the case of, say, Estimize, um, you can come here, and not only uh, if you're not ready to buy the data by sort of clicking that button, button and giving us your, your credit card information, you can enable access to the free data set, which is a smaller time frame. It's sort of cut down, and you get a, a, free, a, a free sample so that you can do what everyone would want to do before you know, sort of dishing out some money. Uh, we give you the chance to try it out, uh, investigate it. Uh, and try out free samples. And there's no limit as to how often or how much you use these free samples. This free sample is limited based on the, the time frame that, it, that, that we make available to you. So uh, typically, there's a two-year trailing window of time that isn't available to you in the, in the free data set. But that means you typically get like five, four, three years of data that you can use to explore and, and understand the data before you make a purchasing decision. Uh, so any of these data sets, if you want to, if you want to use them, you come to their their page here on under the the data menu, and you you click click here to enable free access uh, to that data sample, and that will give you access uh, to the data. And uh, you know there are lots of other data sets. We've got uh, we've got uh, earnings estimates. We've got all that Quandl data. Uh, we've got um, 
We've got lots of events, um, buyback authorizations, and other events from Eventvestors, uh, from Eventvestor. And I encourage you to go and investigate and learn more about those data sets. Uh, but today we're going to talk a little bit about ACERN and uh, ACERN's Alpha 1 new sentiment data and the data that James Christopher used in his algo. Uh, so I wanted to to throw things over to James Christopher now and uh, have have a quick conversation or sort of the meat of the, the the webinar actually, have a conversation with James about the algorithm that, that he wrote and how he went about, about using it. So let me go over and, uh, and get James unmuted. Oops. We'll get James unmuted. James, can you, uh, are, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Josh. Awesome. And I will make you the presenter. Um, and so while we're doing that, um, James Christopher, just while you while you're bringing up your screen and and showing it to us, uh, I guess the first question I have for you is just you know can you tell me about yourself? What's your background? You know how you how you came to be uh, working on Quantopian and and uh, just give us give us the quick bio. Yeah, of course. Um, like you said before the web webinar started, uh, I'm an intern at Quantopian. Um, I go to school at University of Washington in Seattle. And um, I've just kind of had a personal interest in trading. Uh, before I worked at Quantopian, I worked at an agricultural company called Nelson Irrigation. And there I worked in the research and development department, uh, creating new methodologies to test sprinkler efficiency. It was towards the end of that internship that I started playing around a little more with uh, quant finance trading. And I actually built my own paper trading engine. Um, it was at that point that I found Quantopian doing a little more research, you know, figured I'd get some extra information. And uh, I applied. and. You know, the rest is history, I guess. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so you saw the ACERN data, um, and just tell me a little bit about like you saw the data. Like, what kind of hypothesis did you come up with? Like, what was the starting point for uh, for your algorithm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, one of the first things I thought about was you know it was it was the sentiment score, right? They have the nice scale, the range, sentiment score, and I was like, how can I use that? And so I tried a lot of different things by, you know, timing with the sentiment or maybe like a momentum thing with the sentiment. But I, I was doing that and I was getting some results, but what I was pretty much ignoring the impact score. And I didn't really know what that was, so I figured I'd explore that a little bit. And so that's kind of how I created this, the main factor, this is a single factor algorithm. And basically that's why I created the factor is I uh, take this, I take the uh, stocks that have a high, um, sensitivity to the news, they have a high impact score, and I sell those, and then conversely, I buy the ones that have a low impact, a low sensitivity to the news. All right, so so I just sort of one thing that I wanted to sort of clarify there, you mentioned sort of essentially two pieces of data that uh, that the ACERN data is delivering, um, the sentiment score and the the impact score. Um, and you, maybe you can give the quick quick definition of that and if, if not maybe we we throw it over to Kamesh but like what 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 is the difference or could you give a, a clear definition of both of those um, both of those fields that that were in the the data feed from ACERN? Yeah sure well I think the best place to get that definition would be the ACERN's uh, sure. oh. page on the data store and so uh, I'll just I'll just read this out. Impact score on a scale of 0 to 100, the probability of the stock will change by more than 1% on the next trading day. Gotcha. And so the way I thought of that was, um, you know, that is like almost, you know, we talk about beta to the market. Um, I kind of thought of it as beta to the news. You know, how, how are these stocks, uh, how sensitive are they to the news that's coming out about them and how relevant is the sentiment? Gotcha. Gotcha. So you're, you know, you played around with some stuff with the article sentiment, but then you, you pursued this impact score. Uh, could you show us sort of the, not just, uh, could you show us the algorithm and show you just sort of the nuts and bolts of how you access this data inside the, the Quantopian, Quantopian uh, IDE? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's take a look at the source code for that. Um, you know, the big new thing is that we have the data, and but what's even bigger is we have pipeline. And what's great is that the pipeline and the data store are completely combined. And so what you see right uh, for certain data sets, what you see right here is the line. This is how I get the data into the um, IDE, into the uh, algorithm. Just one line importing the data set. And so I create a custom factor through pipeline. Uh, average impact, you can see it's uh, pretty small. There's not much to this, really. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. So that that gets the data that gets the data inside the inside the algorithm. And then what are you you know, especially if folks don't don't know what the pipeline API is like, how are you how are you using it? And what is what is that pipeline API sort of designed to do? Mm. So the pipeline API is designed to go, OK, we have all the equities available right now today. Let's and, and then you can define these factors. And so what you do is you define these factors and then it'll compute the factors you know, for whatever it is, it could be a momentum factor, a volatility factor, it'll compute the factors over the entire uh, tradable universe and then feed those factors to you um, in the algorithm. Of course, you can set different things, like you can set screens here to only show you, you know, have, you know, securities that only have a certain liquidity or securities that are above, you know, say their, you know, average price. But what it does is it just allows you to take this huge universe, all this data, you know, about how the, you know, how the equity, equities world is and then funnel it down into to, uh, kind of the more granular area where you can get it through your output right here, which it just outputs as a convenient data frame with uh, the securities as the index and the factors that you have as the columns. Gotcha. James, just, uh, just a quick heads up. When you're scrolling, I think your audio is, is cutting out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So just like maybe uh, just just stay okay. stay scroll less or when you scroll hold off from commenting um, cool so yeah. so we've got we, we're, we're taking so if I'm understanding correctly we're taking this impact score and we're using it we're using it to, to, to pull a ranking and we're using that ranking and then if I look at lines 53 and 54 uh, we're, we're building a list of, of longs and shorts is that right you've got 50 longs and 50 shorts yeah, that's the exact idea. The idea is to kind of get thinking in this factor mindset, this uh, ranking scheme mindset. And so that's what you see right here. And, you know, the 50 longs, 50 shorts, that's completely arbitrary. Um, you know, those are just numbers that I decided I wanted each of my portfolio legs to be sized at. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then and then how often how often are you buying and selling? I see that rebalance, that rebalance function sort of down at the bottom. You know, what's mm -hmm. the what's the what's the when when are you entering and exit exiting these these longs and shorts uh, I'm exiting and entering just once a month and an hour after the market opens to kind of avoid some of that uh, illiquidity that comes at uh, right on market open gotcha so it's very very infrequent rebalancing um, which is uh, you know that helps minimize commission and slippage for when you uh, are considering those things thinking about the tradability of an algorithm gotcha gotcha and um, and so what I I think that's sort of the meat of the algorithm. Um, how do you think? How did it perform? And you know, what what did what did the performance look like? And what was what was your analysis of that? At it, and you go, okay, um, it's got a nice up into the right profile. That's pretty good. You know, we always like to see that, but it doesn't beat the benchmark uh, uh, when you think of just total return. So, you know, that's when you have to look at your risk metrics. You have to look at your ratios, like the sharp ratio and your beta and your volatility and your max drawdown. And, you know, for here, the beta is, um, it's not zero beta, but that's okay. Uh, you can have some exposure to the market. That's, that's all right. You know, you just don't want too much. And uh, it's got, you know, a pretty nice small max drawdown of only 5%. That's a, you know, the max drawdown is a very tradable metric to me. It's one where you really, you know, you know, can you sustain a 5% drawdown? Can you sustain a 10% drawdown? You know, how much gut do you have for that? So, you know, on the surface, just looking at these metrics available uh, in the post, it looks okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, you know, you know, in terms of in terms of uh, like once you you publish this algorithm in the in the forums publicly, um, what was what was the feedback that you started to to get on that? Like, if there were, there are ways that you thought that you could improve this algorithm, what what were what, what were what were those things? Yeah, so we got a little bit of uh, feedback. Um, you know, Gary provided his, uh, you know, you know, dollar at risk analysis, which is always nice to see. But um, you know, one thing that I would really like to change is, you know, in the code you saw that it said, uh, you know, a long leg and a short leg of only 50 securities. Um, I would like to change that to a percentile, because when you have that long short of 50 securities, you can run into issues, and you see see that issue kind of crop up right here. At the front of the back test.
that the universe is pretty small, and so what was happening is there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a hundred stocks to buy on. You know, hey, you know, James, 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 could you uh, sort of repeat those couple lines? Because while you're moving your mouse, the the audio cut cut off at least for me. Okay. Um. So at the beginning of this back test, you do see that there is a drop in leverage, a drop in the number of positions. Uh, that there is due to the arbitrary fact that we only chose 50 stocks for each leg. What happened was at that point in time in the universe, we didn't have 100 stocks that met the criteria, and so it only bought one leg. Um, so that's one thing I like to do is change that percentile. And then, of course, I would like to get some out of sample on this, and more in sample would be really beneficial. Gotcha. You know, do, do you think, I mean, part of this headline was, was part of the headline of this uh, webinar was that, you know, is it a, you're building this for uh, uh, the contest. Um, do you think this is an, an algorithm that's well suited to the contest? If you're going to sort of sort of groom it for use in the contest, um, you know, what do you think you would you would do uh, to 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 get it into the contest so that it's sort of eligible for 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 winning or or even uh, selection in the Quantopian Fund? Like, what kind of what kind of things do you think you would do to improve it? You know, with an eye towards the contest and the fund. Well, with an eye towards the contest, it's definitely. Uh, it definitely meets the basic work requirements. You know, it has the hedge, it has the low beta, um, it has positive returns. You know, but um, in re you know, what you really need to take away from this algorithm is not the factor; it's how we're using the factor and how we're using the data to come up with these kind of creative uh, ways of you know combining this data uh, with other data sources as well. And in regards to how I would think about this for the fund, it needs a lot more things on the robust uh, practical side. You know, it needs to check better for open orders or whether one leg is more exposed than the other. Um, and so there's, or, you know, make a sector neutral version. Yeah. Um, there's a lot in that regard on the risk management side that needs to be taken care of as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, could you dig into the, the sector, sort of explain what you mean by, you know, the sector neutral or what, uh, you know, risk relative to it, to, to sector exposure? What, can you explain to, to the audience what that means? Yeah, so you know, um, exposure sector is really we're thinking about how much, how many dollars do we have allocated to any sort of you know the nine or eleven basic sectors of the economy. Um, you know, you don't want to you don't want to be completely exposed to one sector and unexposed to another sector in case there's a failure, um, you know, a market failure in either of those. Um, when you're looking when you're looking at it for its signal generating potential, it's an especially uh, prudent thing to reduce to make yourself market neutral. That way you can really and you know analyze and see okay is my signal coming from my algorithm is it coming from this factor do I have some alpha here or am I really just getting lucky and just following you know some sector or some industry in the economy? Awesome, awesome. Now did you you know some of those things you can suss out with with the Pyfolio library that that we have built into Quantopian Research? Did you run this algo through Pyfolio? Yeah, that's actually something I do for most of my algos. Um, you know, if you haven't used Pyfolio before, it's really in research. It's really easy. Uh, we have a function called get back test. You get that back test ID from in the URL or on the uh, or if it's posted, it'll appear at the top of the code in the community. And then you just uh, do back test dot create full tear sheet. And these tear sheets are what we use to analyze uh, um, algorithms for the fund and for the contest. And so. Oh, what you can see here is it has the same metrics, the annual return, the volatility, the sharp ratio that you see on, you know, just the normal kind of post risk metrics page. But something else it shows is it has these drawdown periods. And like I said earlier, drawdown is a really tradable metric. You need, you know, how much drawdown can you stomach? How long can you stomach being in a drawdown? And so it's really nice. It provides lots of relevant metrics for when you recover from that and how long those were. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, was there anything that jumped out of you inside inside this analysis that you know that, that sort of sort of gave you gave you greater insight about about this algorithm that you wrote with Pipeline and Acern? Yeah, um, and that would be the rolling metrics. As you can see here, this rolling portfolio uh, beta to SPY is really low. It, it never dips above, it never goes above one in magnitude, and it's pretty consistent. Also, as far as what values it takes on, which is really good if you're, you know, if you're thinking of the algorithm in a portfolio of other algorithms or other trading, um, 
you know, strategies. You want to be able to have a predictable algorithm. And so you can see here that the beta is really low and it stays consistently low throughout the entire um, can, can, test. Can you, help me, can you help me understand what the rolling beta means differently from the, from the beta that you see in the, 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 the risk metrics in your, in your back test result? You, you had shown us a beta before. It was like negative 0.23. You know, how is that number different than, than this chart that you're showing us here? Yeah, so what that beta is that you're seeing in the, you know, the general risk metrics profile is the beta of the entire algorithm from beginning to end, not thinking about where it was anywhere in between. It's purely taking the returns, calculating the covariance matrix, and then deciding that beta. What you're seeing in the rolling beta is, okay, let's look at its beta over the past six months or the past year, but let's do it over you know, every day and plot what those results are because those cha those are changed, um, you know, it's a moving metric and it can change over time, which is why it's so hard to estimate. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, before I, before I jump over to Kumesh, is there anything else that you want to, you want to cover uh, on the, on the, on the tear sheet? Um, not, yeah, um, not really on the tear sheet, but just overall, um, you know, this isn't a defense of the factor, you know, of this specific factor. It's really to kind of, you know, think about what you can do with these data mm -hmm. sets and how you can combine them with other data sets too to create, you know, that sector neutral. Or maybe you can combine, you know, the impact score with some sort of pricing momentum or volatility figure. And then, you know, where can you find intersections that generate alpha? Right, right. So, you know, there's, there's um, I think the cool thing here with, with Quantopian and, and the data is that we're doing a lot of the work to map all these disparate data sources into, into one system. So that you don't have to, you don't have to go through as the as the person developing a strategy. You don't have to um, sort of figure out, you know, mapping the symbols all to sort of a unified symbol mapping, and then you can easily use all of these data sets, uh, all of these data sets for um, it together in in one in one algorithm pretty easily, pretty quickly, right? You can get that fundamental the the sectors or other fundamental factors from Morningstar. That's integrated into pipeline. You have Pricing data from Momentum, that's integrated into that same pipeline API. You've got this Acern data, that's integrated into this the same you know a, API. And you can even do say maybe look for regime changes with with macroeconomic data from Quandle right now, and that's all all unified into a single API for you you know you know for, for you to, to write an algorithm with. Cool. Um, so let's uh, with that. Uh, James Christopher, why don't you just hop push push over uh, the the screen over to the Acern data set, and I will unmute Kumesh and welcome Kumesh to the panel. How you doing? Hey, uh, Josh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, uh, great presentation so far. Uh, uh, so you're our you're our closer here, Kumesh. Uh, <laughs> you bring it try up. Try my best. Try your best. Uh, so Kumesh, you're this you know you know. Can you just tell us a little bit about um, you know, about Acern, you know, about the company itself? Um, you know, yeah. yeah. How old are you guys as a company? What, you know, what do you typically do? Yeah, so, sounds good. So uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Axern. Um, so we started Axern about 2.5 years ago, about two and a half years ago. And what we're currently doing is we're monitoring the web. So we're monitoring about 20 million public news and blogs, uh, and we're deriving different types of analytics from those news and blogs. Uh, so every day we're getting about five million raw articles from the web, uh, and we have ex we have extensive spam filters uh, that's able to uh, basically process and uh, parse these articles and uh, giving you actionable articles uh, from those from taking out majority of the spams from there. So you know Quantopian Quantopian are you know users aren't your only customers, right? You're you know, who are you typically selling your uh, the output of, of of all that processing to? Yeah, so some of our largest qu uh, clients are uh, are some of the most well-known quantitative hedge funds in the world. Um, so they are our main users right now. Gotcha, gotcha. So this is the kind of like you know professional quants professional quants are using this data, um, and and sort of individuals on Quantopian can. Um, you, you know how like how do you derive? You know help me. You you you. It sounds like you're crawling the web, uh, and you've got a, sort of a bunch of historical data. Um, how are you deriving that sentiment itself? Can you sort of take us under the covers a little bit to help us yeah, understand, you know, what, what's the what's the processing for this sentiment? 
Yeah, so uh, the sentiment analysis algorithm that we do, it has it, it, it basically breaks down into three different layers. So the first layer, uh, we use an approach called bag of words. Um, so bag of words, basically, we have um, a finance-focused dictionary which contains uh, positive and negative keywords that we look for in articles. And these positive and negative keywords, they have different weights. And so when you look at an article, you see all these positive and negative keywords in the article. We're able to grade those keywords, and we comprise a sentiment score for that level one um, uh, bag of words that we do. And then the second level, uh, which is it's called n-grams. So n-grams is basically event-specific sentiment. So for example, um, uh, price declining uh, is is uh, it, it could be is, is a negative sentiment uh, when you when you talk about trading. And so we apply sentiment based on trigrams and bigrams, so different types of phrases that's in these uh, these articles itself. And then the last model is called deep learning. So it's a machine. Uh, so the sentiment is machine learning. Um, so and this last model, which is deep learning, uh, we basically had uh, PhD students actually tagged about a hundred thousand articles manually, uh, based on their perception of this article affecting the stock price. And we use that as a training model to train the millions of articles that we currently have um, based on the sentiment. And so we put together these three different layers, and we are able to give a very accurate sentiment score uh, that correlates very well with the stock price. So, and so that that last part where you you're training you're training based on the sort of manual tagging is that the sentiment or is that the the impact score that that uh, James Christopher is also talking about? Is that, um, that that's just the sentiment. Okay, so how so this 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 impact score that James Christopher has how do you how do you derive that? So there's sort of the sentiment of the article, and then this other field is the impact score. How are you how are you yeah. deriving that, that that calculation? So the impact basically lets you know if an uh, article is going to have a more than one percent impact on the on a company at the end of the trading day. And in the alpha one, we basically do an aggregation of that impact, uh, a daily aggregation basically. So the way we calculate the impact score is that we overlay events data uh, with the stock price data itself. So uh, let's say whenever Apple gets into a lawsuit, uh, does this usually affect Apple stock price at the end of the trading day by more than 1% or not? And if it does, we put a 1 and, uh, and then we go to the next instance where Apple gets into a lawsuit. Uh, we check to see if it impacts the stock price. If it doesn't, uh, we put a 0 and then we keep doing that for the entire four years of history that we had and we calculate a probability score. So we're going to say that uh, maybe next time when Apple gets into a lawsuit, uh, this might have an 80% chance of impacting Apple stock price by more than 1% at the end of the trading day. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so there's, there's uh, so, so you, you look back at the historical, historical impact of, of news and different news, news event types and, yep. and to, to, to figure out whether or not that that has an impact on on the score. Um, That's correct. Cool, awesome. Um, so with that, we're about a half hour in. So why don't we do the last part of our of our show here or our webinar um, and answer some of the questions that have come in so far. Um, so the first question that I see here is, what is the typical subscription rate for premium data from Philip? Um, I'll take that one. Um, so in the case of the ACERN data. The I think today we're uh, this uh, this this new sentiment is is being sold at fifty dollars per month, um, and it's also sort of a month to month um, a month to month commitment. So you can you can cancel this at any time, um, but it's it, a CERN is is about fifty dollars a month. There are others that um, that are at thirty dollars a month. There's some that are up to a hundred dollars a month, and there's I think there's even some down at uh, ten dollars a month. Um, so there's a, there's a range, but uh, I don't think anything is over uh, over 85 or 100 dollars a month right now in the in the premium in the store for the premium data. Uh, let's see. Simeon asks, is the source available either in the tutorials on Quantopian or in the community? Uh, so James Christopher, you uh, you posted this uh, this algorithm in the in the forums. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, right up here is a, a certain Alpha One Long Short. Uh, you can just search Alpha One Long Short in the communities, and you can see the source code for this, which is a probably a pretty good template if you want to get started using the Acern data. Excellent, excellent. And yeah, it's pretty easy to to change out. You know, you can very easily change out that impact score for another um, 
for another another field uh you know the the sentiment just to see see what was going on there um and so definitely that that code is available and i think i think james christopher has been playing around with some variations too so i'm i'm sure that uh as as he as he plays around with those uh he'll he'll put them he'll put them in that form thread as well um let's see Farsis asks, and I'm not sure if we'll know uh, off off the off the top of our off the top of our head, but what kind of stocks had the lowest impact factor? Is there is there some kind of sort of common thread there? Um, that's uh, that, I'll read this. I'll read the question specifically. What kind of stocks had the lowest impact factor? Did they have the lowest trading volume as well? Uh, so I guess maybe that's a question for Kamesh um, in terms of the the impact fact. Is is trading volume volume also taken into account in that impact score? Uh, no, it's not. Um, only the price uh, of the stock and the event itself is taking uh, taking uh, into consideration. Uh, volume doesn't play a factor here. So, so Tharsis, that's a I I would say you know that's a great that's a great sort of thread to pull on and and you can maybe look for look for some sort of correlation or uh, correlation there in the data. You can hop hop into hop into Quantopian Research with uh, you you get volume data um, from a from a get pricing call. And you get uh, the impact score there on on uh, on the ACERN data set uh, in the interactive mode, and you can you can look for you can look for some sort of signal there. Uh, yeah, that's a really good um, that's a really good train of thought. You're thinking, okay, you know, you're thinking, is this a real signal here, or is this actually just a signal masquerading as a low volume trading strategy? So that's great. Gotcha. All right, Sean asks, I may have missed this in the beginning, but can you recap if the free data can be used for a contest algo or if a subscription needs to be purchased for first? So um, if the if the if it, in the case of the absolutely free data, so the, the data from, from Quandle, for example, that's that has no subscription fee, you definitely today can go in and use that in uh, in a contest algorithm right now. So there's lots of uh, macro indicators, there's a there's a VIX daily price there that you can use uh, in the contest today if if you wished. Uh, if you want to use uh, the a certain premium data, you're going to need to make the subscription uh, because the you know to get essentially to get the live updates to do the out of sample testing, you'll need to have uh, you'll need to have that subscription to get the most up to date data. Uh, typically with these premium data sets, there's a window of time starting today back to either a year or two years from today that you don't have uh, you don't have access to that data if you don't buy the premium set. So I'd love to make all this data free. Uh, unfortunately, it's just not economically viable for Quantopian uh, to buy to buy all this data from 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 the vendors. I'm sure I'm sure Kamesh would love for me to buy it for you, <laughs> but uh, but it's a, a not a scalable not a scalable solution for us. Um, but yes, for the contest, you'll need to you'll need to make to purchase the premium sets. You need to make that purchase. Uh, if I pay a subscription, can I download the data for machine learning? Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, that's not that's not possible. Uh, part of the sort of the deal that we strike here with uh, with the data vendors is that uh, is that they'll uh, that we'll make sure that the data stays uh, constrained to the site. So you could try to do some machine learning on on Quantopian research. Uh, you know, given you know, you should be aware that there's some memory constraints there. But if if you can sort of act within those, uh, maybe you can do the machine learning uh, that you're interested in and, and run it on on Quantopian research. Let's see. Or you could contact Kumesh and ask him really nicely. <laughs> <laughs> that might work. Um, the, Kumesh, this is a question for you. Could you elaborate sure. more the more more on the third layer that you call deep learning? Which aspects yeah. of this layer makes it a deep learning method? This is from Tharsis. Uh, well. I can probably explain it very basically. So uh, just to recap, we basically had a few PhD students actually looking at the articles itself, reading the articles, um, and uh, it's pure linguistic. So uh, they basically read the article, and based on their own interpretation, uh, they grade those articles, um, with, uh, and they basically grade it on whether the author is saying 
something very negative or positive towards that company, and they give a score between negative one to one. Um, and after they grade those articles, we use that as our training sample. And this training sample, we basically start training our entire future models uh, with that. And uh, this is just the third layer, so we combine all the three layers together uh, to get a really good sentiment score. Gotcha. And you know, Kumesh, I, I also sent your email address to that to that questioner sure. because they have yep. deeper, deeper deeper questions. Yep. Sounds uh, good. James Christopher, this is for you. Um, the question is from PK. He he asks, I saw or he or she asks, I saw your algorithms return is less than the benchmark. Did I read it correctly? And then I'll I'll append that with you know is is that you know is that okay? You know, does that concern you in this case? So yeah, absolutely. The return is definitely less than the benchmark. Um, you can see that the benchmark returns, you know, upwards of 25%, and I'm like at 11, 12%. So yeah, I'm only returning about half the benchmark. But you know, it's important to analyze things other than uh, just total returns, and that's kind of what this risk metrics is, and that's what the sharp ratio is. You know, we um, we quantify the volatility of an algorithm as the standard deviation of its of its uh, of its returns. And so what the Sharpe ratio basically says is, okay, is the returns, um, you know, is the total return, is that greater than or equal to the, the you know, the regular uh, volatility of the algorithm? And so what we can see here is that, you know, it's returning 12% with a volatility of only around 7%. And so the risk-adjusted returns are greater, absolutely. Um, so I am not too concerned about that because if you have good risk-adjusted returns, this um, and especially these kind of long short strategies, uh, you know, if you have some level of alpha, you can leverage those up and you can maintain that risk adjusted returns, but your overall, your total returns will go up as well. So that's, you know, this is a good candidate for leveraging up. Gotcha. So essentially, yes, yes, the returns are lower, but you're, uh, you're, you're taking lower risk and as such, you're, it's a good candidate to, to leverage, uh, leverage up to, to match or exceed those, uh, those benchmark returns. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the risk and return trade-off is one that we have to face. Right. And, and, and if you examine the, the criteria that we, that we use for the contest, you know, that's essentially the, the same. It's consistent with our, our philosophy for, for the contest and the types of algorithms that, that we're looking for as part of the Quantopian hedge fund. Yeah. If, you're, you know, if you look at the contest metrics, you know, there's the Sharpe ratio, the Sortino ratio, the volatility ratio, the Kalmar ratio. All these ratios... Um, they all embed volatility in there somewhere. So, you know, if you have to optimize along an axis there, optimize along, you know, lowering your volatility because that's a major component in a lot of the metrics that the contest is scored on. Awesome. Um, next question here is uh, from Nick. Um, and this is a great, this is a question for Kumesh. Uh, how many articles are parsed per company, both liquid stocks and illiquid? So, you know, what's... what's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a difficult question to answer. Uh, how many articles are per, parsed per company? So, for example, um, a lot of articles comes from Apple because uh, lots of people are saying stuff about Apple, releasing news for Apple. There, there could be, I, I think, uh, in our three years of historical data, about 500,000 articles were from Apple, and versus uh, lower uh, versus micro micro cap companies, which probably have like. I don't know, like 10 to uh, 25 articles. So it really depends on the company's size and the company popularity. Mm -hmm. uh, that basically depend. That basically decides how much articles uh, that's coming. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so next question from Philip: uh, Are is there a free sample for the Assern sentiment data? And the answer is yes, definitely. The there is the free sample, and uh, James Christopher's algo uses uses that uh, free sample. It, it's got a uh, let's see, remind me, remind me, Kamesh, what the start date is for your data set? Um, so it's August 2012. So it goes from, the free sample goes from August 2012 to uh, two years from today, so that would be up through January 2014. Um, so yes, there's definitely a free sample to try out. Uh, so this is more of a general question. Uh, what other tools aside from Pyfolio are integrated into in Quantopian and a great help to quant research? Um, you know, off the top of my head, and James Christopher, you can probably help out here. There's uh, 
there's a you know we've integrated our data so there's 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 pricing there's market data there's fundamentals data there are a whole host of uh, libraries um, that uh, if you uh, let's see what was it TA lib SK learn there's a bunch of other bunch of other libraries James Christopher can you name off any others off the top of your head that that would be of interest so that people can get a feeling for for what libraries are there yeah no the libraries are huge and honestly Pandas is a really big oh, one. Yeah. It's something that you use in the IDE, but you know it was really it was developed for a Financial Times series analysis, yeah, kind of in the big, you know the beginning history of it, and so that's a really powerful thing. But I mean, what's also good is within embedded in the Quantopian community, people post different you know uh, kind of views on how they analyze code and stuff, and they post little code snippets to show how they did that. And so I think there's a lot of value embedded in the community as well about ways to analyze your portfolio. Or your algorithm. Gotcha. Um, we've got a question from Miguel. Uh, what if there is more than one event on the same day that is related to the stock? How would the impact score, uh, you know, take that into account? I guess that's for Kumesh. Um, so it basically, uh, for that, it basically take into the impact for both events itself. So um, the impact score basically lets you know if an article is going to have more than 1% impact on that company the same specific day. Uh, so for example, uh, if the company gets into a lawsuit event, um, it, it, let's say the company gets into a lawsuit event, we're going to calculate the impact for the company with lawsuit. And if the company gets into, let's say, a product recall event the same exact day, we're going to also calculate the impact for that product recall event. Uh, and with the Alpha 1 data, uh, these impact are aggregated daily. So there could be multiple events uh, that's happening for a company in one day uh, with different types of impact scores. Uh, in, and in that 24-hour period of time, so the, the time frame where we aggregate the data for Alpha 1 is, um, I think, 12.01 p.m., uh, no, 12.01 a.m. to uh, 12 uh, a.m. the next day. Uh, so we basically do a 24-hour aggregation and give you one score by uh, combining those impact scores together. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and that sort of segues nicely into a question from Matthew. It's a little, it's probably more for me. Is there any development moving towards real-time data in Quantopian, i.e. an article comes in um, out and five minutes, you know, comes out five minutes after market open and is, is tradable in Quantopian? So I think to, to Acern's credit, uh, Acern provides other, other products in the market that are capable of providing that data. Uh, right now, Quantopian only has sort of one access point for for that data, uh, which is um, which is which is in the pipeline API, and that that access point only runs um, before trading start at uh, in, in in live trading. That's at around 8:45 a.m. each day. Um, you know, we definitely have a vision for uh, getting getting this data also available uh, intraday, uh, but I it's definitely on the roadmap, but not something that I would expect to see in the next say six months right now. Um, you know, we're going to hammer out the hammer out uh, as much data as we can into a daily frequency, and then and then hopefully move on to intraday. Definitely see the value for it. Um, definitely think it's a great feature. Uh, it's just a matter of of uh, enough uh, of of scoping of scoping our projects right now. As 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 any software developer, I hope as other software developers, I hope I hope you understand. Um, this is from Tharsis for Kumesh. Uh, do you do you, uh, do you do any kind of pre-filtering uh, before the bag of words layer, like stop words removal, stemming, negations handling, yep. that sort of thing? Yep, we do all of that. Um, so, bef so when we're getting this five million raw articles, we have extensive spam filters. Uh, so these spam filters actually start filtering these uh, these articles down, giving you giving you basically relevant articles. Um, so we also we do have stop words, um, uh, inappropriate keywords. All these things are looking uh, into the article, and we're phrasing them out. Um, and uh, we basically do entity extraction, event detection, so we're able to identify these specific companies uh, and events in articles. So once we extract these relevant articles, then we start applying our, our analytics on top of it. So after we get those actionable and relevant articles. Uh, then all these bag of words and sentiment analysis algorithms come into place. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, next question is from Francis. Um, is there a systematically, and this is for James Christopher, I suspect, 
um, but maybe Kumesh, can, you can chime in too. Is there a systematically sure. stronger effect on the long side versus the short or vice versa? So did you, did, you know, I'm curious, did you poke in at that, James Christopher, in your algo? Uh, no, I didn't look at the, I didn't look at the legs individually. This is a pretty uh, bare bones, unoptimized uh, um, algorithm. Like I said, the look back period is completely arbitrary. The rebalance period is completely arbitrary. So I haven't digged into the legs or anything like that, but that'd be something really good to look at. All right, Francis, that's uh, that's your cue to go for it. Um, uh, so take it, take it for a spin. Yeah. Um, Please, the comments, <laughs> results. Uh, next up from uh, uh, Jan, presumably John or Jan, uh, can you use your own uh, GitHub libraries and with Quantopian? Unfortunately, no. We only uh, allow, for security purposes, we only allow specific uh, whitelisted libraries that uh, we've, we've built into the system. We're uh, always taking... Uh, you could you could sort of incorporate that code into into your algo or into into research, but that's uh, not possible today. So to sort of dynamically call those uh, libraries um, from Philip Chen uh, or from Philip again. Uh, besides U.S. stock market data, what other stock market data do you offer? Um, so you can check out. Um, there's the, we provide fundamental data from Morningstar uh, for free. Uh, that's over 600 different metrics that you can use uh, very similar to how you saw this CERN data get used. You can also use those fundamental uh, data points. Uh, there are over 600 metrics there on uh, on each stock or each company that, that uh, is in the U.S. market. Uh, and then we have all the other data that you see there in uh, under the data menu. Um, if you click on uh, data in the navigation menu, you see all the other uh, data. We've got some stock estimate data from Estimize. Uh, we've got this data from a CERN, and then we've got lots of, uh, of events, um, buyback, earnings calendar, that that sort of data um, about U.S. US companies as well. So over 40 data sets, uh, many of them uh, cross-sectional in nature. Uh, hold on. Uh, can these, uh, so this is maybe for, for James Christopher, can these impact scores be used in conjunction with other technical indicators like RSI, um, you know, in a generic fashion? And I think this is more of a general sort of concept in the pipeline uh, API. Do you think, James Christopher? Yes, ab absolutely. And this this really hits, on, hits the nail on the head of why we have the pipeline API. And it's so you can come up with multiple different factors and find, you know, alpha producing ways to combine them, and so yes, absolutely, you can, you know, do, you know, if you're if you're a diehard technical analysis person, absolutely go, you know, go wild combining these and trying to come up with something that'll uh, produce a good entry or exit point. Absolutely. Um, so next question: uh, What is the delay between when an article is released and when it's incorporated into the data set and available to trade? Oh, so I guess that's my question. Yep. <laughs> Keep me right, on so, your toes, Kamesh. Keep me on your toes. <laughs> so uh, when we uh, scrape the data, uh, if we basically, t uh, for 100 articles, it takes us about 30 milliseconds to process and analyze that article and deliver it to the end user. Um, so uh, this is after. So. What I mean by processing, it's uh, it's actually filtering it down for spams and applying the different types of analytics and stuff from it. So uh, 100 articles every 30 milliseconds. Uh, that's the uh, latency. Gotcha. And 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 then in terms of it's surfaced inside Quantopian, it's surfaced on a on a daily basis. Yep. Right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Here's a long question. Let me let me try to let me try to summarize it. Uh, do you... You filter securities. Uh, do you f essentially is there a data set for filtering based on uh, the total number of news articles? Um, is sort of the the first part of this question. And I'm not sure if we do you have that data and is it surfaced in Quantopian? I guess those are two the two questions. I'm not sure if that if a if a count of news stories is surfaced on in the data in the Alpha One product on Quantopian. Maybe James Christopher hop over to the data set and we can look at the example notebook and we can find out. So if you go all the way up, yeah, there we go. Let's let's check out. Each of these data sets has an example notebook that 
uh, we've written that just as a quick introduction to um, how you can access the data and look at the data and introduce you introduce you to that data. It clones that sample notebook and puts it into your account. Um, and then you can scroll down. Uh, nope, we don't have a we don't have an article count, but so you can see you're looking at a, a, a full a full uh, full sample full sample of the data or a quick quick view of five row or three rows of the data. You can see each of the columns though. Um, question on data for stocks or other things such as foreign exchange FX or, or Bitcoin uh, from Jan. Uh, no, today we only provide uh, we only provide market data for U.S. equities. Uh, we have an alpha program in place for futures, and that is currently underway. Um, and that's that's sort of next for for us um, in terms of the Quantopian.com website. Uh, similarly, question right now, uh, our, our market data is provided at a minute level, a question about tick level data, and if there's any change on that front, and we are, uh, we are still, uh, there are no plans currently to change and move away from um, the minute level, minute level uh, bars um, as, our, as, our, as our highest frequency of data. Um, in terms, the, another follow-on question about your own libraries. Um, that's correct. It's it's any any Python library. You can't you cannot import um, in an outside library that we haven't or that we haven't whitelisted specifically um, for you. Uh, we do that for security purposes. If you try it, um, you'll likely get an error that 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 throws a throws a security uh, warning to you. Uh, you can do that with your own libraries if you run Zipline. Uh, locally, then you know, all's 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 fair there locally on your machine. Uh, question from PK for Kumesh: um, Do you just use articles or breaking news too in your impact scores? Um, that so articles and breaking news. Uh, so I would say articles is the general category, and breaking news could be articles itself. Um, so the 20 million stores that we monitor, that's uh, pretty much premium news and uh, and the, and a, a majority of them are actually blogs as well. Uh, so there could, uh, we are uh, integrating breaking news as well into the uh, into the source that we, that we monitor. Gotcha. All right. Um, let's see. Do you try unsupervised learning? To, this is for Kumesh again. Do you try to use unsupervised learning to do sentiment analysis without human manual rating? Uh, well, the way sentiment analysis is going, uh, that's definitely the future that everyone sees, but uh, right now it's all supervised learning. Um, but in the future, uh, unsupervised learning might uh, be the way to go. Awesome. Um, and we are we are heading to the, to the top of the hour. And we're Almost done with the questions here. This has been amazing. Um, so a question about contest winners um, for the Quantopian contest, the Quantopian Open, um, and about what the success rate is. I don't have that those numbers off the top of my head, but there is a CSV that you can that you can download from the results page, um, not the leaderboard. I think there's a one of the pages regarding the the contest. Um, there's a CSV that you can download and check out check out the return streams for. Uh, each of the contest winners, uh, so I'd encourage you to, to check that out. Um, some folks win, some folks lose. Um, I think it's a great lesson there in, in overfitting, um, overfitting algorithms, uh, watching some of those contest winners, especially the early ones. Uh, some, and then a, question, a roadmap question about providing rentable computing power. Uh, from Jan, I think that's definitely something that we've talked about. Um, definitely uh, sort of a roadmap item. Uh, we're, we're not actively working on that, but we definitely we definitely see the value of of providing sort of a premium premium computational uh, premium computational capability for for direct integration into Quantopian. That's definitely definitely something that uh, we have pondered is on our roadmap, um, especially from a sort of a, sort of a, a, a commerce perspective. And uh, with that. I think we have reached the end of our, our questions. Um, so it's about 56 minutes in. I want to thank everybody for, uh, for their attention. Um, this was uh, sort of the, 
the, the highest attended uh, Quantopian webinar of all time, I think. And so you guys have, you guys have all uh, been a part of a little bit of history, a little slice of history there. Uh, feel free to, um, I will wrap up by saying feel free to, to reach out uh, to us when it comes to, to questions or concerns or sort of follow-ups on this data, this algorithm. James Christopher, uh, it, this algorithm is posted in the forums and uh, we will also post the recording of this, uh, this, this at that, uh, in that forum post as well um, so that folks can listen to it again uh, for those who, who couldn't, couldn't come in, couldn't log in. And, uh, and, and if you have any questions, feel free to, to send, a, send an email in or send a ticket into the support team. Um, that stuff can get, can get routed to me and I can answer your questions that way. And if I happen to be away or on vacation or asleep, somebody else can answer for you as well. So definitely uh, feel free to use the ticketing system if you have more questions. Otherwise, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we will see you on our next, uh, next data-centric webinar. Thanks so much.